Hey friends, welcome back to another Seed Talk with Lisa and Lane. Hey Lane. Hello, hi everybody. So we are pretty tickled pink to be here with you today. I mean, we love talking about seeds during, we know that seeds can be started all the time, but we know we're in high cotton seed starting time right now. And so we're super excited to talk about it because I'm doing it almost every day and it's just nice to be familiar. How about you, Lane? Are you starting seeds right now? I am, but I don't do it every day, usually on the weekends. (laughs) (laughs) That's the difference between it being your job and being at your hobby, right? I mean, while Lane's job is seeds, now that's a deep conversation right there, isn't it? Your daytime job really is seeds, but not necessarily starting seeds. Correct. (laughs) So we um, are super excited to bring this to you today. And Um, Just a reminder, if you want to learn more about the work that the Gardener's Workshop is doing, you can learn more about that over on our website. There is, oh my goodness, our online garden shop, which is fully stocked with the same seeds, tools, and supplies um, that you hear us talk about. So Lane, take it away. What are we talking about today? All right. So have you ever wished that you could have sunflowers even earlier in the season? And are you willing to take a little bit of a risk to potentially make that happen? Today, we're going to be talking about some of Lisa's early sunflower experiments that she's done over the years. We're going to talk about how she does it and how successful she's actually been, as well as some of the colors and varieties she plants at this time of year. So, Olaine, that's so perfect. You know, I am. I've been doing that for several years and decided to kind of share my results starting last year and showing people how to do it. So what a great topic to talk about today. Yes. All right. Let's get started. So in episode 25, we actually talked about seed starting and transplant timing. And we mentioned that to be safe, it's a good idea to plan on planting your warm season tender annuals out around two weeks after your last expected frost date in the spring. And today we're going to find out that as a flower farmer, Lisa actually starts planting out sunflowers quite a bit earlier than that. So before we get into the details of how she does this, can you tell us, Lisa, how long have you been experimenting with early sunflowers and why do you choose to push the envelope and plant sunflowers out early? Sure. So I would... I mean, thinking back, I have been trying to push the envelope in different ways, sometimes successful, sometimes not, for at least five to six years, if not longer. And that experiment was based on an earlier time where I can remember actually discovering a sunflower seedling growing out in my garden when it was still pretty dadgum cold outside. When I was just walking around, one that had just reseeded, it was actually a um, back, it was called Moulin Rouge, which was a sunflower that I grew a lot of in my garden before I was farming as a gardener for the birds as well as the beautiful flowers. And um, when I saw that Mother Nature had replanted a seed and it had sprouted and grown, I thought, shoot, I can do that. Why don't I start earlier? But I didn't quite get as as aggressive as to do it and to really figure it out for several years after that. So I've been actually doing it for about the past five years. And why is it worth it to you to take this risk? Oh, my goodness. First off, sunflowers are an enormous cash crop for my farm. The way that we grow them, the spacing and the size and the varieties and the way that we offer them to our customers. And so, you know, my thought is why, why wouldn't I try to have them sooner than I ever could before? In addition, one of the things that we suffer from here on my farm in early spring and spring is we have tons of cool flowers, but a lot of them are more on the foliage filler side than the focal flowers. So I thought, what a marriage made in heaven. Let's see if we can't get some of those small beautiful colored sunflowers to bloom early. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, the risk, which is kind of the cost to start the seeds and all your time and effort. And you also know the potential reward of what you might be able to sell these sunflowers for if they do make it. So you can kind of decide for yourself if you think 
the risk is worth that potential reward. And for Lisa, she has determined that it is in fact worth the risk. Oh yeah, for sure. All right. So as a reminder, we are in Southeastern Virginia, USD zone 7B8A. Lisa's last expected frost date in the spring is around mid-April. So how early relative to your average last frost date do you start sowing sunflowers? So I guess we should say that I start sunflowers and plug trays and plant them out when they're two to three weeks old. So normally, if I follow the regular, the rest of the world's calendar, I would start sunflowers about the end of March to be ready to be planted out as soon as that last frost date um, passes. But what I have started doing is, um, and I've even pushed this a little bit because, you know, I keep having to just push it a little further and further, right? We now start sunflowers typically um, the first couple of weeks of March. Mid-March would be pushing the envelope, meaning they'd be going out in the garden a couple of weeks before they were supposed to. Um, but we even pushed that further last year. And what you have to understand and wrap your head around is you need to look at your weather pattern, you know, and as Lane has already mentioned, this is a gamble. That means I am willing to risk a, some sunflower seed and a little bit of labor to potentially have flowers at the highest demand time of the year. And so I would not plant all the space I have available in early sunflowers. Um, if you know that was the case, I would start some. You know, we do this in a controlled manner. Um, so you don't want to put all your eggs into one basket is the point here. So just keep that in mind. But of course, and I'm sure we're going to talk about it, you need to have the proper equipment to follow that with. Yes, we will talk about that. All right. So you start around six weeks before your average last frost date sowing some sunflower seeds. Yes. Indoors. Indoors. Correct. Yeah. And the transplants are ready to be planted outside within two to three weeks after sowing. Correct. So when you are sowing these seeds, when do you hope to have these sunflowers blooming? What is your dream date that these would be available for your customers? Mother's Day. I mean, the, the hottest flower day of the year. And to, to have three sunflower blooms to put in mixed bouquets or to have them for your florist or for supermarkets or, or, or. Um, so, yeah, and that also plays into what varieties you actually attempt this with. Right. And we're going to talk about that next. So which colors and varieties of sunflowers do you plant for these late spring, early summer bouquets? Because whenever you're planting, it's important to keep in mind the time of year these flowers are going to be blooming, what colors are going to be desirable at that time of year. And also, like you just mentioned, Lisa, you want to keep in mind the days to maturity of these flowers because you are hoping to get a really fast turnaround. And I think that that's a step that I didn't understand back when I first started farming particularly, but there are sunflowers that bloom as quickly as 40 to 50 days, which is, isn't it premier, I think, that blooms yes. that quick. Then, um, so you have that up to where some of the giant sunflowers, which we wouldn't necessarily grow as cuts, but they can take 110 to 120 days to bloom. So you really need to pay attention to the days to bloom. So with that in mind, um, what we have grown, I have never grown the premieres early in an effort to get them early. We'll definitely try that this year because that's a fairly new variety to us. But I have um, historically grown just pro cuts. And can you describe, I we will go through the individual colors in just a minute. Can you describe why pro cuts are your flower of choice for this time of year? Sure. So pro cuts um, are my go-to sunflower um, and particularly this time of the year because of the colors it offers, which can be very spring-like and it's quick. It's 50 to six, 55 to 60 days from seed to bloom and they perform fairly well under short day lengths. Thinking about, you know, early spring, the days aren't long yet. 
Yeah. So they're a single stem sunflower, very quick days to maturity. They're pollenless. So now let's talk about some of the colors that you plant at this time of year. And on the slide, if you're watching over on YouTube right now, we have Pro Cut White Light, yes, which has creamy white petals and a light gold and green disc and Pro Cut White Night, which has creamy white petals with a dark central disc. I just love these. And you know, just, this is a great Me image so, because I will say that the white it's buttercream. I mean, it's very, yeah. faint. it definitely passes for white, but the color is just scrumptious. Um, so my goal in the color selection is to have not the classic summer hot orange sunflower. We have plenty of time to sell those later. We're trying to to offer what's going to go with these spring colored flowers that I have blooming on my farm. And these two, white light and white night, pretty much fit any bill. Um, yes. And they will go with any flower that we have. And frankly, um, another part of growing and starting really early is these sunflowers because of the day length being shorter are naturally smaller and when you add in these unique colors with a smaller bloom people literally do not even recognize them as sunflowers they think it's some daisy that you're growing but yet it's a sunflower that is long lasting and just sets you up to have i mean as many focal flowers as you need at this time of year Yes. I love these two. These are a must grow for sure. Yes. All right. The next two we have up on the screen are pro cut gold light, which has gold petals and a green gold central disc. And then pro cut lemon, which has more lemon yellow petals and a dark disc. And again, these are just not the classic sunflowers. Um, you know, I love Pro Cut Orange and all of its cousins that are in the orange family in this group. But at this time of the year, those are not the colors that are in the high demand. And the gold light, I truly feel like looks like perhaps it can take the place of Gerber daisies at this time of the year oh, as far as for yeah. my commercial. Don't you think? Yes. I mean, once they open the way that they develop, they are very similar to um, Gerber daisies. And I mean, florists are always looking for a replacement for a Gerber daisy. Gerber daisies are difficult to handle and fall victim to diseases and short vase life. Um, so the gold light is, I mean, gold light is the color I could grow every single week of the growing season, but it is particularly important at this time of the year. And then following that, the Pro Cut Lemon um, is it's lemon yellow, y'all. It's that baby shower yellow. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a really great color. And what I think is the most versatile of all of the, or a versatile characteristic of all of these is they'll go with everything else you have. You know, they aren't so specific. Yeah. All right. And then we have one that was a new addition last year, mm. and that is Pro Cut Peach. How would you describe the color of this? Oh my goodness. Pizza? I mean, now you're not going to see peach, peach, peach color, but- right. There is definitely a peach glow to these sunflowers. Yes. And, you know, we have the bird's eye view of all of this because we grow so many sunflowers and we grow so many colors that when one like this opens up in the midst of all the other colors, it is such an obvious standout. Um, so Pro Cut Peach, definitely um this is an in-demand, again, all season, but very significant to these early blooming bouquets and commercial customer demands. Yeah. So Pro Cut Peach, I think that was the perfect way to describe it. The petals have a sort of peachy glow to them. And again, this has darker discs. Yes. So we just talked about some different colors that you plant. Some of them, especially like the white light and the white night are quite light petaled. So what are some issues that people might experience with lighter colored sunflowers? Do you have any tips and tricks? And what's the proper harvest stage for those to kind of mitigate some of those issues? I'm so glad you've asked this. So first, let, let's go in backwards order of the what we just talked about. 
Um, I want to say, because I've got this question from so many of my flower farming friends, is they asked when we had so many peach blooming, they were asking, does it have a soft neck? It, in my experience, it has the same stiff neck that the pro-cut oranges do. And um, it just performs like the standard great orange sunflowers. Um, and unlike some of what Elaine, what Lane is alluding to here is that some of the lighter colored blooms can actually have some additional issues. So let's just talk about white night and white light, for instance. They, just like every white and light colored flower is susceptible to soiling in the garden, which you all do know that that is bug, poop, and pee. When you see <laughs> spots on your flowers. I mean, that's what's happening out there, whether it's a good bug or a bad bug. So that's one of the things that makes them susceptible. So we always are quick to harvest these two guys, these two colors, white light and white night, um, preferably as just one petal has literally lifted off the face of the disc to let them open indoors, protected away from um, in potential insect damage. Um, and another problem that we experience with not just pro cuts, but all of the specialty color sunflowers, all the bicolors, um, they can tend to have soft necks, meaning They'll, their necks will dip. And the way that I have combated that, and I followed a recommendation of a very seasoned flower arranger that I've sold flowers to for a really long time. She was over here picking up a load of flowers one day and there I had a bucket of um, Rudbeckia actually sitting off to the side. And she said, what's wrong with those? And I said, well, they're, they're wilted, their necks are soft and I just cannot get them hydrated. She said, well, do you put a splash of quick dip, which is a hydrating flower solution. Do you put a splash in your harvest buckets? That'll fix that problem. And so when I started experiencing soft necks with the white um, sunflowers, as well as some of the bicolors and the chocolates, the dark colors, I started that practice. I put about a two tablespoons of quick dip, which is a hydrator, into those harvest buckets so that the first drink that these guys get really fills them up and along with being sure that you keep the stems upright. And that means if you're a small grower or a home gardener, you wanna use a very narrow bucket to harvest these so they don't fall over and bend naturally in the bucket. And our combination of harvesting at the proper stage, using quick dip, and keeping them upright, we have really great results with keeping the necks upright. So how much water is in your bucket when you're putting the two tablespoons or so of quick dip in? So that's typically, that would be a gallon of water in a five gallon bucket. But of course we're harvesting hundreds of sunflowers. If you're harvesting just a few and have a smaller bucket, um, you know, first off, two tablespoons is not a scientific proven yeah. recipe that was she said a splash and that's right. what I did for a long time and then when people started at, I started sharing this tip I had to measure so I would say if you're using a tall narrow bucket and you think there's a quart or two of water in there I would put one tablespoon and if it doesn't work add more the next time you know and just yeah. measure so you know kind of what to do moving forward all right so now let's talk about how often you sow these sunflowers once you start around six weeks before your average last frost date sowing, how frequently do you continue to sow sunflower seeds? So we sow seeds every week. It is like a mortgage payment. Um, you know, you have to really, for me, the turning point on my farm was that's how Kelly, she started out as our seed starter because we never had time to do it. And she started here part-time on Mondays. And that was all, that was her job. Every Monday she showed up to work. And the first thing she did every single week was sow our weekly sunflowers. Because if you don't sow them, you can't plant them. If you don't plant them, you can't grow them. If you don't grow them, you can't sell them. Dave Dowling told me that over and over again. And it finally sunk in. Yeah. So when you're sowing every week, what percentage of your normal 
weekly sowings are you doing at this time of year? So for your early sunflowers, are you doing the same amount of seeds per week that you do later in the season or is it a reduced amount? Probably about 25%. So normally we would do four trays a week, um, but during the early bird, I typically do one tray a week. All right. So you're sowing sunflowers every week and you're sowing approximately 25% of your normal amount that you might be starting every week later in the season. Right. For the early birds. Yes. For the earlies. Yeah. All right. So now let's talk about how you actually grow these sunflowers. So after you germinate them on a heat mat, do you grow these indoors under grow lights or out on your carport? Because we've mentioned before that once the weather is warmer, you're able to germinate them on your heat mats and then grow them on outside. But what about for these early birds? Yeah, and that's what really makes me limit how many I start is because how much grow light space do I have available? And if you try to grow them indoors without grow lights, they get all tangly and elongated and it's just a mess. It's not even worth trying. Um, so yes, we germinate them indoors on heat mats and then they go under grow lights, assuming that it's too cool for them outside. But keep in mind, um, you know, we didn't talk about, or I haven't said yet that sunflowers is what I've discovered is sunflower transplants are much more cold tolerant than we ever imagined they were. So my desire is to get them outside growing on the carport as soon as possible. But yet, if it is too chilly out there, they're not going to really grow. They're just going to sit there. So you have to make provisions to have some grow light space available to get those babies up to size so you can get them in the garden and get them under cover to heat them up. So even though sunflowers are warm season tender annuals, they're actually a little more cold tolerant than a lot of other warm season tender annuals, which is why you're not doing this experiment with some other types of those seeds. Exactly. They have proven their pudding. <laughs> All right. And as we've mentioned before, just a reminder that Lisa grows her sunflowers in 128 cell plug trays. And that's just because of the volumes that she's actually starting. If you're a home gardener wanting to start sunflowers, you can definitely use a two inch soil block. Yes. So do you harden off your early sunflowers? And if so, what temperatures are safe outdoors to actually set them out to be hardened off? So, um, Yes, is the short answer. Do we harden them off? I mean, we try to harden off everything going out at that time of the year with heat being a potential afternoon threat. Um, and But the other part of that is that these sunflowers, the early birds, are definitely going to be hooped and covered as soon as they're planted. So that provides some hardening off kind of conditions for them. So if it's above 50 degrees outside, I put them out on the carport um, as they're nearing their time to go to the garden. And, um, and then that will kind of get them ready to go to the garden. But once they get in the garden, they get that cozy little, you know, environment put around them and they do really great. Yeah. So what temperatures do you look for when you're going to actually plant these sunflower transplants out into the garden? And can you describe kind of what you just touched on, which is how you protect these sunflowers out in the field after you've transplanted them? Sure. So what I'm really, you know, once you start your weekly sunflower freight train, as we call it, you really have to get them out to where they're going to ultimately go because you quickly, they'll quickly grow, grow kind of tall and rangy. Even if they're sitting outside in full sun, they aren't happy. You don't want them to go much beyond the three week window. And so when it comes time for that first planting to go out in the garden, you know, it's nearing that time. I look at the two week forecast and I'm just hoping and praying that I don't see anything below, you know, freezing which is 32 degrees Fahrenheit, right? Um, because what we've learned is it's better to get them out in the garden, planted where they're going to grow, and then hoop and cover them. And they take, what happens is they'll tolerate that frost under a row cover. They just might not grow as quick until it actually starts to warm up a little bit more. So what we do is we use our wire hoops and we cover with the standard 
um, row cover that we have here on our farm, which is the lightweight row cover. Um, we only have one weight here on the farm. It just keeps confusion down. And if we ever find the need, which I've done it for sunflowers, that we need more protection than what that offers, which is four degrees of protection, we just double it. Um, we had sunflowers, gosh, this was probably two or three years ago, ago that were literally almost hip high and, you know, below freezing weather was coming. And I told Bobo, I said, well, the best we can do is to just throw a row cover over them. They were already taller than our hoops. We'll just throw a row cover over them and kind of um, put some stakes in just to kind of drape it to protect the direct frost settling on them. Um, you know, what have we got to lose at this point? And they did great. Um, and so we had sunflowers that year. We had sunflowers before Mother's Day. It was really, oh, wow. really fascinating. So if you're gonna embark on this early bird sunflower experiment, you have to have grow light space available to get them going. And you have to have hoops and lightweight row cover to get them going in the garden or they'll just bloom short um, and unusable. You know, you have to try a little bit harder to actually make it work. Yes. And the weight of row cover Lisa is referring to is actually ag 19, just in case anyone is wondering. Yes. All right. And how do you space these early sunflower transplants in the garden. Spacing with sunflowers can affect the head size. So do you space them any differently at this time of year or is it the same year round? Sure. So short days, spring and fall, tend to even um, manipulate even these sunflowers that are said to be day length neutral, and they are day length neutral, they will continue to develop buds and grow and flower even on short days. However, they will definitely be smaller in my estimation, in my experience. Um, so we basically just stick with the same standard sunflower spacing that we do year round. It used to be um, our beds are 30 inches wide. Um, our tractor makes those used to be that we put four rows in that 30 inch bed with six inch spacing, which has been what we've done for years until I visited my friend, our friend, Emily, who's actually one of our seed growers now down at Fuggles Flowers. And she said, Lisa, I am now growing five rows of sunflowers in our 30 inch wide bed, and I am getting the same size sunflowers. So no matter the time of the year, in 30 inch wide beds, we grow five rows with six inches apart in the row. Perfect. And the last question is, how successful have your experiments been over the years? So I would say that it is highly successful in our environment. And I will say that last year, people reporting back in on following along with our experiment. I mean, in people in northern regions, um, based not starting when I start them, but based on these weeks before their last frost day, had huge success. But it's because we take the effort. They get a good start on a heat mat. They get grow lights so they don't get tall and rangy. They get hardened off. They're planted under and then covered with row cover and hoops. And we are watching the weather. If, you know, they're up and budded, we try to do something to protect them. Oh, the cash crop alone return is so very, very well worth it. So we, I mean, we're, we're addicted. And then if you tweak your colors, to match the season that they bloom in. Um, I mean, it's just a no brainer. Yeah. And have you ever lost any of these early sunflowers to cold weather? We actually have not lost any to frost. It's the stunting of the growing that may cause a problem. So if you have some that just don't go on to actually perform well, um, it's that combination perhaps of short days on top of cold that just totally freaks them out and they forget what they're supposed to do. And you get little short, maybe teeny, um, little tiny sunflowers. And I will say this, that once several years ago, um, I don't even remember, I think it was fall flowers, um, pro cut oranges that we had that bloomed and they were tiny. I mean, they were probably the size of a Shasta daisy. And I thought, oh, oh my wow. gosh, what am I going to do with these? Let me tell you something. We had somebody that was desperate for those colors, a commercial customer. So I took 
two or three bunches with me. And I, and I know this question will come, so I'm going to say it. We sold them for the same amount that we sold wholesale sunflowers. We just put more stems in the bunch. Before I even got home from delivering, that florist had already called and left a message. It said, we have got to have more of these. So don't be afraid of small blooms. They're long lasting. I mean, they look like little um, mums, actually. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's it is very, very um, it's an experiment worth experimenting more with. Yeah. And you've already mentioned a few times about the flower size, but are there any other general patterns you've noticed, like how long it takes them to bloom compared to later in the season or anything else like that? Sure. That's a great question. Um, it can take longer um, because of the lack of heat and the day length. Um, but if you tend to them, if they're covered, um, we were actually quite surprised. And actually, I can remember Bobo uncovering some and saying, oh, my gosh, they're like all their necks are crooked because they had been pushing the row cover and we hadn't even noticed it. Um, because when you row cover, it blocks the wind and concentrates the heat. And we did, in fact, and I'm glad we're talking about this. We do, in fact, try to plant those early suns into Bio360 with the black side up just to give another smidge of warmth potentially um, to them and um, works great. Great. Well, thank you for sharing all of these tips, Lisa, and the results of your experiments. That was our episode for today. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you're listening over in a podcast app, make sure to leave us a rating or review. And if you're watching us over on YouTube, please give us a like and a comment. Thank you, Lane. And remember, you can find all of the sunflowers that we mentioned, plus a bunch of others and all the beautiful colors over at thegardenersworkshop.com. We have them in regular packs and jumbo packs. Um, and we would love for you to drop in anytime. So friends, until we meet again, ciao. Bye, Lane. Bye.